Good morning, boys and girls. This is Mrs. P. Um, I am going to consider this to be a library skills attempt. Um, this month is career month, and I'm going to show you some different things about jobs. And uh, this one is called Creative Discoveries People at Work. So you might be thinking that you're a little bit young to think about, you know, what you want to do with your life and what kind of a job you want to have. But I thought it would be interesting to take a book out of the nonfiction section and kind of check, you know, show it to you, show you the different things that are in here. It says, see the many jobs around us, construction and art and safety. There's transportation, radio and TV even the circus and space travel. So let's open this up and see. Mm, there's a nice background. And that's, um, I'm not sure if you call that a combine, but it is harvesting. Um, well, it looks like it should be corn, but I don't think it's corn. Anyway, that is one of the jobs, but that's just the introduction when you go into the book. So people at work. And the contents, and this is what we're just going to briefly look at. Working with nature, construction in the factory, arts and crafts, trades and merchants, transportation, fighting fire and other dangers, journalism, performing arts, TV and film, theater and circus, making music, working to improve health, education, science and research, working in space, explore and play, and then there's the glossary and the index, which gives you more information towards the end. So... Some trades, it says, have survived through the generations. Do you dream about a job you would like to do one day? All occupations require skill and experience. People don't become butchers or architects overnight. They must learn their chosen trades before they can practice them. This may involve studying at a university or working and learning on the job. So that's basically what we're going to cover. Um, and I'm just going to introduce you to a lot of different things. But very early on, when we were people, we did things, a lot of things, the hard way. Until we figured out inventions of doing things a little bit easier. But here you see a man plowing the field because people need to eat. So you need farmers. Um, let's see. So some trades have survived through the generations while others died a long time ago. So in the past, the countryside was even more lively. Growing crops and raising animals used to keep most of the population very busy. Nearly everyone lived in the country. Not only did farmers live in the country, but so did shepherds who tended flocks of sheep and people who looked after geese. At harvest time, workers arrived at the farms to help farmers bring in their wheat or pick their apples or their olives. A whole range of skilled tradesmen made and repaired the farmer's tools. The wheelwright fixed the farmer's carts and wagons. The knife grinder made a living sharpening knives, scissors, and other craft cutting tools. Don't confuse him with the tinker who traveled from farm to farm mending holes in pots and pans. So there were a lot of, um, a lot of things, you know, like somebody going from town to town mending pots and pans. We never see that anymore. Um, but that's but they did the things that had to get done. So here's another um, job, and that is farmers, farmers who supply our food. Now we've made machinery that does an awful lot. You know, we've got um, automatic milkers for cows and and harvesters that take grain and crops down. But they used to have to do it very much the hard way and very much by hand. And that was how they would start some of their little communities. And so here, if you look, um, oh, and it, like it says at the top, machines have revolutionized farmers. So here we've got, you know, the milking machine. In the olden days, well, there's some things that have not changed. We still need people in the field to pick the crops. Okay, we're not going to read the whole book. Um, so we need farmers. We also need veterinarians to make sure that our cows and our chickens and, you know, whatever are healthy. This 
is a plow that's attached to a tractor. And we can see this right around in our own neighborhood. And then a combine. No, okay, I thought a combine was bigger. And they can harvest a field that once took several days. These are all just things that you might think about as you're growing up to figure out what you want to do, what you really like. Um, we need farmers to make sure that the oranges have plenty of water. Farmers can't do too much about the sunshine. But you learn about these things. Sometimes you can learn about them from your parents. Other times you have to go to school and learn it or you get an apprentice job, which just means that you work alongside somebody and learn a trade. So there's tree surgeons and loggers and they trim and cut down trees. And it says, loggers use powerful cranes to pick up and load logs onto trucks. These trucks transport the logs to sawmills to be cut into lumber and processed for other products. Great cathedrals were built by large teams of skilled workers. Remember, I'm going to tell you again, these people did all of the things by hand. They did them in marble and sandstone and limestone. And it says, in the Middle Ages, a cathedral building site, a cathedral building site was a hive of activity. The architect was known as the master mason and was responsible for designing every part of the building. The windows, the vaults, the ribs, the tracery, the master mason combined some of what had been done before with new ideas to design the building. That is why all cathedrals look a little bit alike, and yet each one is quite different. Once the master mason had drawn up the plans, foundations were dug, and the stone was quarried, which means they went to get it out of the quarry. Um, and step by step, you know, they worked hard. And then they... Here they are doing the braces. These are carpenters. And this is what they made. We don't see a lot of buildings like that anymore. These probably employed just hundreds, if not thousands of people. So being a carpenter or a mason or a sculptor is a good, 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 good trade. Now it says giant machines are used to construct modern buildings. So now we have guys that sit, or not necessarily guys, could be guys and girls, that sit at a drafting table and they measure and they design buildings. And then nowadays we have got much more mechanical work and machinery to help us do that. So it takes the place of a, an awful lot of men. Different, different building materials are needed for various jobs. And so sometimes... And maybe some of your dads know this. Masonry, you have to know a lot about plaster and cement and stone and bricks and how to do concrete and gravel. And here these guys are building a tall building. These are for skyscrapers. That's why they have hard hats on, the yellow hats. So in case something falls and bumps, hopefully it doesn't crash in their brain. And then here are other skyscrapers. And men climb these to build these buildings. And then you notice the crane. Yeah, that goes all the way there. And then they use the crane to move other pieces of, of um, construction materials. So here is how a skyscraper kind of starts. They start from the bottom and it says a concrete core supports the tower in the middle. There's so many jobs that you can think about. This one is teams of laborers who work in factories. We have several factories around here that process um, chips and tomatoes and everything we grow. We've got cereal plants. We used to have the, cho the Hershey chocolate plant, but it's gone to a Sconza plant. I don't know if they give um, tours there anymore, but people that work in factories work with a lot of machinery. This one happens to be they're assembling cars. This picture 
is um, guys assembling sardine cans. Okay, we're going to talk about from a piece of metal, a ball of wool, a piece of leather, or a block of wood, the nimble hands of a skilled artisan can shape objects that take form as if by magic. Every piece an artisan produces is handmade and unique. Early on, people thought that the blacksmith had supernatural powers. The blacksmith's skilled hands created useful tools and harmful weapons in the fire. And so in the early days... It says at the wheelwright's workshop, boy, say that three times, workers are busy making and repairing the wheels of wagons and carts. So like now, we have tire shops that fix these things, but here, they didn't have such a thing, so they had to fix everything by hand and figure it out, too. You know, you think, oh, well, I can just do that. Well, you know what? You need to learn a lot of, a lot of things. So here, we've got another kind of an artist, who makes musical instruments. I think that these are probably extinct. If, you, if a piece of musical instrument can be extinct. But these are the tools the violin maker used to make these kind of things. So there's a planer and there's um, those. Let's see, can I hold the book and do this? This is a planer, and the, there's a blade on the bottom, and it smooths off the wood. This is, is, has a groove, and it will start to make a design, and then you chip away the wood that you don't want. And these are used for the same thing. This, I'm not positive what that is, or what you call these. But these are things you learn about. And there's actually, here in Modesto, a couple of people, and they're called luthiers, that make guitars. So it's very interesting. I've got to do this a little bit faster because we have artists who would paint scenes or people so that the memory would stay alive. We have sculptors who have sculpted, sculpted these things like in sandstone of things that happened in history because they didn't have cameras or anything, so they needed to document things that were happening happening in history. And then a lot of churches in the olden days, and we and we have some here now too, but this is a really interesting craft, and that is stained glass. They made stained glass windows from colored glass and pieced all these pieces together, just like a puzzle. So somebody did the drawing and then separated it so they knew exactly where and what color pieces that they had to have. And these are their tools. And this is the glass they have waiting around so they can get on their work table and cut it. We see that more as a hobby now than so much as a job unless someone's really good and they have there's a market for it um let's see the history of trade it's like going to a shop we trade money for goods so we go to the store and we put down money to buy clothes or shoes or whatever or groceries back then they didn't have those kinds of advantages and they had to trade just what they could make with their hands with something somebody else could make with their hands. And see, here these people are kind of out there on the road and they're showing their wares. So you could probably get sausages or bread or milk, you know, some kind of groceries just from traveling people. Um, merchants traveled the world in search of rare goods. And so then when they went to China, or um, the Far East, they got spices. And then spices, cocoa, pepper, tea, cinnamon, coffee, and cloves. And these people sailed the seas to get those because we didn't necessarily have these things.
Okay, so I've really got to speed this up. We've got people that work in the grocery stores. There's people that are stocking. There's people that are bringing. There's people that are bringing trucks, unloading trucks, and there's sorters. We've got, let's see, people and goods, messages, and raw materials. Um, this is like in the Roman Empire. This is what people did all day because they needed to. Mr. Estrada, please call the office. Mr. Estrada, please call the office. They needed to get things done. They couldn't just very well wait. You have to learn how to do things. Um, we've got train engineers, truck drivers, sailors, airline pilots. All these are jobs that people do, driving trucks. This is going in and out of stations. There's trains that are guided by a system of points. Um, to avoid accidents, railroad tracks are controlled by signalers. Some high-speed trains, and we have a couple that go through here, carry people sometimes at speeds of 150 miles an hour. We've got people who work on ships, stewardesses and pilots that work on planes and engineers. We've got people that work up in the air traffic tower to watch to make sure that the planes take off and on at a good, at a good safe um, distance and speed. We've got the police who are here to serve and protect We've got fire people. In the olden days, to put out a fire, you had to start at the well and have somebody pumping it, and then they passed buckets of water all the way down the line to throw it on the barns or the houses that were on fire. We've got a much more effective way to do it, and that's with fire trucks and firemen that slide down the pole. But they've also got very different, there's an English fire engine. This is the amphibious vehicle, and it goes in the water, it drives right in there, it brings up water, and then it drives out. And then they've got, where is it? They've got hoses on there. See there up in the top? That will shoot out um, sometimes to buildings that they can't, they can't necessarily get to. They've got helicopter pilots that can fight fires. And boats, they're putting out a fire on an oil rig. There's a lot of firefighter work, state emergency services. They're also, firefighters are also called to help stop pollution. Um, there are journalists, journalists who are supposed to carry unbiased information, which means they aren't trying to tell you what to do or what to think, but good journalism will bring you just the information and let you make up your own mind about facts that are going on. This is a press. When the Modesto B was here in town, we had presses, because I used to work there, we had presses like this that were upstairs that put out the paper every day. And we need somebody to deliver the paper every day. We've got um, television programs. But we've also got... So while these people are doing the work, sitting behind the desk, we've got a whole other group of people who are behind the camera. And behind those camera people are the people that are sitting there running the soundboards and um, just watching to make sure everything's done all right. And they're monitoring all those screens. It takes a large group of skilled people to make a movie. From the actors all the way down to the cameramen to the directors. We've got film crews and people who make the behind the scenes stuff. That's not a real ship. That is just a probably just one section, but when they film it, it'll look like it's a real ship. 
there are people that need to tell us about the weather. There are custom uh, illustrators. We've talked about that here in, in uh, the library. There's books of authors. Books of authors, that doesn't even make any sense. We have authors who write the books, and we have illustrators who draw the drawings. There's so many jobs. So this month, when you're talking about it with your teachers, about career day or what you'd like to be when you grow up, there's so very many things. Anything you can think of, somebody else had to think of it and learn how to do it. This guy's a circus. When I worked for the newspaper, I actually brought a circus home to have dinner with us one time because she was right there in Riverbank, and it was lovely getting to know what that was like. And she said it was kind of hard work, and not only is it hard work, you travel around the majority of the time. So you're living in a trailer with a bunch of other circus people, and you might get to go home a couple of times a year. Being a musician, you can work in a small band, or you can be part of a whole orchestra. There's jazz, and blues, and rock and roll. People play guitars, and banjos, and cellos, and trombones, and trumpets, and drums, and pianos, flutes, clarinets. We've got doctors and nurses try to find out why you're ill. You could be part of that team. They work to make you feel better. They work to help you with your brand new baby. A good education is a lesson for life. Before we begin to work for our living, we need to get, we need to get a good education. The idea of free public school for all children is a recent one. In past centuries, school was very expensive and only the rich could afford to educate their children. Wealthy families hired private tutors. Most children from poor families were put to work in the fields or factories at an early age. You are very, very blessed to be able to get a good education and learn some things before you have to go out and figure out what you're going to do. We've got researchers astronomers, people involved in chemistry trying to find out new cures for different diseases that come up, people who are working on getting into space, people who study volcanoes. What is that? If a volcano erupts, volcanologists may venture onto the slopes to take samples of red-hot lava. Huh. I don't think I'd want that job. And then we've got people in space. So this is 23 minutes of a bunch of different things that you could actually think about doing if you have the right education. So make sure that you pay attention and learn about a lot of things. Okay, this is Mrs. P. Over and out.